so and 120 statements were taken 92 detectives were working on the case at the time now back in 1965 that's a lot of people and even on today's standards that will be a big investigation but it shows the seriousness that they dealt with it at the, at the time what did you do next the thing that struck me is that there wasn't anything new that we could probably look at within there and my focus turned very quickly to what we hold forensically. All we need is some contacts and some small speck of blood, speck of blood to recover a DNA profile that can prove beyond reasonable doubt that, that someone's responsible. So using the technology which wasn't available back then in 1965, yeah, you think about it, in 1965, we, we might have known a bit about blood grouping, but we didn't have any forensic awareness. It was just a different time, different different world. So you needed the material evidence from the time, and what did you find? I'm afraid we found nothing, which is uh, it's something that can't change. I mean, a lot of the clothing was given back to your father, Colin. And, yeah. The question now is, why was that done when the case was uh, had not been... It was, it was given back in 1966. I it thought. was given to Cullen and Anne and Elsie's father. father. In 66, 67. I can't. They, I think the, the date you, you told the family was the 4th of April 1966. Well, there you go. Then that's because I've obviously recovered that from the file. I don't know why that decision was made. I can't say. But it was, and, that, and I, that's where we are, I'm afraid. I mean, what I've got here from the email you sent to Cullen and Anne at the time, I have established that a significant amount of clothing you returned to your father on the 4th of April 1966 and he also signed a handwritten note on that date requesting that I would like the remainder of my daughter's clothing to be destroyed. Yes. Less than six months after the murder. Yeah. By modern standards and Anne is shaking her head and similarly I think with Colin, that just seems completely incomprehensible that evidence would be destroyed within months of the murder. I agree, but you use the phrase there by modern standards. This is 50 years ago. I can't excuse or account for what they've done. I just don't know why they did it. But it, it, that's that's what they did. Was that routine? Do you see that in a, in a lot of cases, getting rid of evidence? Sometimes. Sometimes. So it's not a one-off. It's happened in other cases too. It, it, yeah, sometimes it happens. Sometimes it's, it's retained. We've gone to the forensic archive, which holds all the material that we submit but unfortunately there was nothing held in the archive i don't know why so that was all the evidence there, there wasn't anything just a tiny fragment that might have been kept all i need is a slide with something that we could examine and we don't have that Anne and colin told me something about the storage facilities where your force kept evidence being damaged by an arson attack yeah the forensic Science laboratory at Weatherby was, was subjected to an acid attack. So I, know, I know it was attacked and I know evidence was lost in the fire as well. Is that sort of thing common? No. 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 But if you think about it, if you're criminally minded, you know how the. Current time is. 1744. If anything had 